Hi everyone, welcome to Dial M for Films. Screenwriter Juhi Chaturvedi's origin story goes something like this. Born and brought up in Lucknow, Juhi did her bachelor's in fine arts at the Lucknow College of Arts and Crafts. During her course, she worked as an illustrator for the Times of India. The handsome stipend of 50 rupees column helped her buy art supplies. She moved to Delhi in 1996 and started working with the prestigious ad agency O&M in their art department. She worked with them for over a decade. In this decade with O&M, Juhi moved to Mumbai in 1999. Her interest in writing, her journey into the world of words, began here under the tutelage of Piyush Pandey and Renzel De Silva. She also met filmmaker and now constant collaborator Shujit Sarkar during this time in the year 2004. Her first advertisement as a writer was for Sprite at the peak of the brand rivalry between Mountain Dew and Sprite. Her interest and curiosity in writing grew. In 2007, Renzel recommended her to Shujit to write the dialogues of Shubite. After Shubite, she even wrote a screenplay draft of the Kishore Kumar biopic that Shujit was working on. Both films did not see the light of day, but two creators through this process had formed a strong connection with each other, Shujit Sarkar and Juhi Chaturvedi. Together, they have created and continue to create sensibility-altering work. This is the chronology of her life, but how does one really introduce Juhi Chaturvedi, the writer? I've never met Juhi. We've only been chatting for a month over the phone, but she's already had a profound impact in the way I'm processing and reacting to every conversation I've had about cinema. Her writing has the same effect. Her characters stay because they're extensions of us on screen. She helps us understand us better. More than connecting us with others, she connects us with something deeper within. Her work invokes a sense of nostalgia even about the present, a wistfulness that our crazy lives don't allow. Her writing makes us long for that ponderous pause, that playful interlude, and time spent without purpose. She has managed to connect us with our everydayness, deftly bridging the gap between cinema and the people who consume it. It's time to pull Juhi in. Juhi, welcome to Dial M for Films. Thank you for making the time. Thank you so much. Really happy to be here. Very happy to get this time with you. I've had such a good time chatting with you over the last month. Um, you know, before we get into uh, the intention of writing, I just wanted to dial this back a little bit and ask you uh, about your early days as far as writing goes. Uh, Juhi, you went from design to writing. What sparked your interest in writing? How did the opportunity present itself? And what was that first experience uh, when you wrote for the first time? See, uh, fortunately, advertising... Um... Is, is all about ideas at a you know broader sense. So anybody is allowed to, or anybody is free to come up with an idea. But for the ease of uh, running an organization, there is an art director and there's a copywriter. There are clear divides there. And uh, uh, so the role of writer usually uh, extends from coming up with the larger picture, with the larger concept, the campaign idea, presenting it to the client, et cetera, et cetera. And whatever the art requirements are, uh, the art director would perhaps do branding, you know, ensuring the look of the campaign is maintained and all of that. But somehow it's still a very uh, 2D experience. You know, art, advertising art I'm talking about, um, I think it was lacking the kind of dimension I was seeking. It was uh, feeling quite limiting and, and uh, the ideas that I was perhaps coming up with were not getting exactly <coughs> translated in its um, to a sense by my writer partners. And that was uh, uh, quite stifling because you think something and what is being written is, is completely different from what you've thought. But then you are supposed to do art on the work which you have thought, which is now being, you know, taken over by someone else and, you know, all of that. So... Uh, those years or those few months were uh, slightly more, um, I was just introspecting, what am I doing here? Why am I here? This is not what I wanted really to do. And which is also true that when I joined art school, I did not uh, join to join an art uh, advertising agency. I wanted to do pure art. I just wanted to do fine arts. I wanted to do poetry. It just so happened that the trajectory of my you know, career or life or whatever was... Uh, going in a different direction which i wasn't so you know happy about 
and uh, fortunately uh, piyush uh, pandey was our super boss and and he was aware of the fact that i like to think and i have language on my side so he sort of pushed me to it that if you're so feeling uh, this way just write and and you know it it's typically for a writer to write and an art director to art direct but but that little push from his side that if it's so uh, damaging then just write it yourself instead of cribbing and i think that <laughs> <laughs> really was was a good uh, uh, kick start and no. as far as the uh, sprite uh, ad uh, is concerned the spoof again the brief had been lying around for quite a few weeks and um, so all the writers had given their shots and uh, it was with other group right so you know there's advertising also very territorial you know the groups are quite territorial you don't allow one group to hijack your brief and etc so uh, in absolute desperation i went to um, uh, the boss of another team and i said give me something i'm like really <laughs> right he said okay here it is see what you can come up and and that's the ad that happened eventually so which was which didn't go down too well with uh, you know a lot of people that she needs to decide what she wants to do and i was like you know i want to do both <laughs> so yeah yeah that's how it started so juhi when you actually you know i know that uh, we've spoken about this that piyush was a very encouraging super boss and right. uh, the kind of culture that existed uh, at onm was a culture where everyone everybody who was involved in creating something um right. was involved in every aspect of it in terms of just understanding what uh, people were going to put put out so it wasn't right. as if it was clearly defined in terms of like need, you want on a need to know basis you know yeah, you yeah, yeah. involved that was the kind of culture that existed so mm -hmm. when uh, you did give this brief a shot you know right. which uh, yeah. people were unable to crack uh, right. just the very act of writing when you attempt something for the first time what was it like like what happened uh, when you wrote this then it got green lit and it was yeah. going to get made what what did it feel like when you uh, wrote it and when you actually saw it on screen see of course uh, uh because it was my first ad i wasn't so equipped with uh, writing crisp dialogues or absolutely uh, precise um, uh, script for a 30 second because uh, you know that comes over a period of time you start valuing every second every frame but uh, uh, in the beginning it was perhaps you know a two pager and of course by uh, no means it can fit into a 30 second ad and um, but, but the idea the broader idea the the bigger idea was in place the fact that these guys uh, um, jump down and say i want to do don't do here do there jaldi ke piche so all that was there you know the those uh, little little sparks were there and it just had to be written really uh, sharply and and uh, that time my image at boss was uh, abhijit avasti um so uh, they i mean he also found the sad like really uh, quirky he said okay there's something there but but let's just crack it together and uh, of course his experience as a writer uh, and he has been he had been doing this day in and out so you know you trust someone else's judgment who is willing to uh give you that chance you know you, you know that it's not to um hijack it is just to make it better and and uh when you spot those people around you you, you must put your faith in them and uh, so that's what i did and and he made me write a few drafts and uh, also because you know it had reached a point that um, maybe it will happen or maybe it will not happen it had come to a point that uh, uh, maybe we would not do the spoof at all so this was just perhaps one best shot and uh, it it worked out in our favor and but but yeah uh, honestly speaking uh, uh those those drafts you know cut it out remove this line remove this word you know you fight for every single word in 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 a 30 second ad why is it not why can't i and then you time it you put the timer and you say the ad yourself so all those things over a period of time they they uh, chisel your uh, craft idea maybe there but 
uh, you know, to put it in a given timeline and to say exactly what is expected out, it's a very sharp, uh, precise requirement. And and uh, are you saying the most important thing? So did that you, recognition. Did, yeah. Did you to continue to write? Did you continue to write, uh, you know, after this, after this one particular ad, did you then just continue to kind of, you know, very slowly keep writing as opposed sneakily, to... Sneakily going around asking for briefs. <laughs> if anybody is not able to crack anything, can you just try me? I might have an idea. And, you know, <laughs> things like that. And of course, uh, then there were times that, um, you know, there was this brand called Huggies Diapers and I was handling the art part of it but then you know okay you do a 10 rupee promo ad for this so write a promo 10 rupee <laughs> off on a pack of diapers or on pack of sanitary napkins which nobody wanted to work on you know so things like that started coming my way but but they were good enough to you know keep me going actually you know because then writing means you present it to the client writing means uh, you know you're doing the theatrics the drama writing means that you're calling the director writing means you go on the shoot and so all those things, even if it was a lousy 10 rupee ad, but it was still enough to, you know, give me that little high and take me out of the office in front of, you know, in, in, in a live environment rather than, you know, being uh, just in front of machine and, and playing with, uh, you know, some 2D forms. Yeah. Did you feel like you tasted blood? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's, I'm telling you, and and when I can feel that way for a 30 second ad, imagine my the 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 quenching of thirst when when it came to shoe bite, when the dialogues of shoe bite happened. It was like, what was this? You know, where did this come from? And the thought of writing a film had never occurred in my life ever ever. I would have never thought of Bollywood or anything to do with cinema, um, if. Renzel and Shujit had not, I, and it's not that uh, I was the first choice. See, uh, they were already in talk with uh, talks with other writers, and they were working on different drafts. So, again, you know, when you're, you know, in the middle of trying out so many people, so okay, you know, let me ask her. Maybe she might just be interested. At least it'll keep her busy. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we used to call him Father Ren, and Father Ren was was really kind to. <laughs> Father Ren presented a beautiful opportunity, and uh, I guess we all now, uh, after you know, fifteen or sixteen years of you writing, are very grateful to him that he initiated this. Yeah. Um, we uh, anything that we take up in life uh, mm -hmm. as we continue pursuing it evolves over the years. Yeah. What is your relationship with writing? How has it evolved over the last 15 years that you've been writing? See, the uh, initial years went in a lot of self-doubt, if I would say that, because I always had that little uh, feeling that I'm not a writer. You know, this is not what I started with. This is not what I was working towards. This is not what my card said, or I didn't do, uh, you know, sort of say English honors. Uh, I went to an art school. I did fine arts, pottery, photography, and all of that. So, you know, in the life uh, that is behind you, none of that you think supports you to become a writer. Um, because that's the understanding, oh, writers are most well-read people. Writers know English perfectly well. Writers, uh, I mean, they write, so they are writers, and I've not written anything, so I'm a writer. But, uh, um, yeah, so the initial years were, were a lot of self-doubt, and that's why when uh, Vicky Dona happened, uh, when, I mean, I, I was sure of my ideating skills, that ideas will come. I know there's no dot of ideas. Uh, but to translate that into a full-length feature film, it's it's not a joke. It's it's a lot of um, hard work, and and uh, more than hard work, I think you just have to invest into it completely. And I did not know if I had anything that I could invest in. I mean, what is it that? What are the prerequisites of? I have never read a screenplay before Shubhite. That was my first screenplay that I ever read. Or or this is how the process is. I had no idea till Shubhite had happened. But somehow the the part 
you know, the, the months that I was uh, spending while writing the dialogues for Shubhait or being there on the set, you know, there's an instinctive uh, understanding that these are ultimately people, the characters. And what I'm saying is pretty much uh, what normal human being feels. So, you know, slowly, uh, those are the things I started uh, picking out from for myself. But these are the things that work in my favor. I understand uh, uh, feeling. I understand uh, what minds think and, and not think. So the perhaps the human uh, quality of, of uh, cinema or filmmaking, that maybe somewhere started uh, working for me. The, the craft or, or the, the technical aspect was somewhere I was lacking big time. You know, you just have to dive into it if you want to do it. So even if it was self-doubt, I said there's no other way to find out uh, whether I can do it or not uh, by, you know, I just have to do it. So therefore, when Shubai, when I was writing with Dona, I had not told this to anyone that I'm writing it because uh, you, know, you don't want to be a subject of joke. That <laughs> okay, 30 second ad <laughs> is fine, but writing a full end feature film, excuse me. So, uh, so I didn't want anyone to know that. And I did do, you know, there was, there was a lot of struggle internal that how do I complete 120, 125 pages? I've never written more than three pages, you know, per ad at max. So it, it, yeah, it was a lot of self-doubt. Piku was extremely important for me. Vicky Dona, not so much. Vicky Dona happened as, you know, I, I would say, you know, beginner's luck or whatever. But Piku was where uh, it was extremely important for me to know if I have it in me to uh, take, to leave everything else and, and to make this my everything. Because by that time I'd realized that, you know, you have to, you have to put yourself out there completely, only then it will happen. And if cinema is my space, if, if that is the voice that I'm seeking, if that is what helps me be myself the most, uh, Piku was very important for me to make me realize that to let go of a lot of things and make that thing yours. You know, coming to letting go of a lot of things and kind of, uh, you know, also um, exposing yourself um, yeah. in a certain way, which is which are prerequisites of writing. Uh, right. I also wanted to ask you that writing for you has always been a vehicle of self-discovery. You know, you've right. said that. And yeah. in your exploration of characters and their inner worlds, you've always discovered something about yourself. Okay. The, and, and, and the start of every film you have written also comes from a deeply personal uh, space, you know, out, out of personal experiences. Starting with Vicky Dona, what did you discover about yourself in the process of writing the film? Vicky Dona was... I mean, at the very surface level, it was just a quirky idea, which made me laugh. And that phone call to uh, Shuji, uh, obviously, he uh, had a chuckle too on the other side. Uh, and I mean, I, I again had a little vague idea of what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about um, anything which may, uh, you know, it, it was a fine line on, on that idea on that subject. But how deep I'll be able to go into the, the, uh, the world of couples who want to have a child or uh, the world of um, the refugees who are settled there. You know, people who have come from the other side of the border uh, in late 1940s. And, you know, that world, that understanding, I had no uh, um, inclination that, eventually it will lead me to have such a close relationship uh, with people so easily we you know write off that oh these guys they just show off these guys oh and there's no depth in them and and the more i um, uh, spent time with writing uh, wiki donor the more closer i felt i was going towards and i had never known this but after writing, I realized that writing a film is a much deeper experience than just saying, oh, it's a script. You know, script, yeah, it's a very technical term. But I think uh, 
uh, that quest to know everything about everything uh, to know about it so much that you can eliminate a lot and keep only that much you know if you keep only that much if that is all your knowledge is i i don't think it will ever go beyond that even for the audience so the process the time that, that you spend in in uh understanding the internal crisis whether it's of vicky or whether it's of dolly or whether it's of vijay or what leads uh, what what makes them do uh, uh, certain things the conversation between vijay and dolly while they are drinking so that visual um should it said that ek shot aisa dal do where these two women are drinking i said okay but uh, believe me just a visual over there uh, was not uh, satisfying i i felt that that needs a lot more this is a moment where two women are uh, you know in in you know in that little um, they're drinking they are little ease easy with themselves they are they might just be easy with each other given the relationship they might not judge because they are under the influence of alcohol they they've done the day you know it's it's a moment in their life so what is it that they can talk about when they're drinking right what is their truth because apparently when people are drunk they speak the truth so this so what is so what is bg's truth and what is dolly's truth which is the truth of their relationship and that's why that that is how that conversation came so a visual which should it uh, because he sometimes gets these uh, you know scenes like a visual that how how do we put this and then he leaves it on me that you know do something can you put this over there it needs to be of course justified also so, absolutely you know, yeah so uh, you know when when someone throws these kind of little challenges uh, or or these little open ended um, he's not asking me to write this only he's saying do whatever with it so you try and understand that whole world the world of a mother in law which is not just bg any mother in law you know what is the what is the reason or what is the that so much of pride and and they gloat in saying that you know this is what i've got from my daughter in law's house it's just that you know i want to feel important as a mother in law as a woman i want to feel that my daughter in law my daughter in law's family has thought that i am important enough forget the dowry part of it i'm not talking about all that but that that little something that comes out of her suitcase of from the true so it, it it's a very harmless greed i would say it's like a white lie it's like you know giving yourself that importance even for because perhaps the husband in that setup or the son in that setup is not giving you that so your only hope is this woman who is coming from outside but she might understand and when she gets me i'll be able to show off that look she listens to me so you know there were a lot of things you think before writing those four five lines only and vicky donor for me was uh, that that you can do so much cinema is not just or writing film is not just writing a script it is a process it's an internal process it must be an internal process and it has to eventually uh shape you or give you a, a, a kind of form which you didn't have before a learning that you were not aware of you know truth that perhaps would have gone if i had not thought of this world of sperm donation there are a lot of things that would have you know things would have not happened Uh, for me as a person as a human being in my life so that realization happened with vicky donor and therefore piku came from a little more uh, 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 a slightly more aware space in vicky donor it happened by chance and i came out with that realization but in piku i went in knowingly that it is going to demand and i will have to get you know you sp- you speak uh, about intent you yeah. speak about uh, you know engagement and i yeah. guess in donor um like you said you realized that you know this is what you enjoy about writing because it gets you to delve into worlds uh, yeah. that you would like yeah. to explore and then find your characters and yeah. invariably if your engagement is deeper mm-hmm. uh, you 
kind of also you know that exploration also leads within yeah yeah right? so my question to you juhi is that in a process that is this involved you know where you uh, you don't work uh, backwards mm. that this is the character i want to create now how do i put this to paper but you go out uh, exploring the character and then the character forms out of your exploration i know you've managed to do this you've got great collaborators in shujit and in ronnie but how much um, how much working in a mainstream setup or in a setup that has deadlines does it allow you to do this see uh, there are when i speak of intent what i try to say there is one is your intent as a just a writer as as a professional as somebody who's part of uh, you know this creative uh, field but then there is a larger uh, intent of everything of uh, and if this is my chosen um path how do i connect this to the bigger existence of me as a person as a human being as a life that i'm living and and i feel that if they both can collaborate uh this this path can be a lot more enriching for me so it is a slightly selfish intent that at you know at a larger level it needs to satisfy me because these are my only years or chances or moments or experiences uh which i'm gathering for my you know to the eventuality right and and this is the these are the only people who are going and then i say these are the people i mean the characters of my films the relationship that i'm forming with them i don't see them as as uh, fictional for me these are um very deep rooted um uh, bonds and 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 the journey that i'm taking with them you know for a year or two uh, it, it cannot be separated from my own personal journey the, these are happening simultaneously i'm walking this path with them fictionally and in real space as well for me that needs to work together now having said that will every film allow you to do that perhaps not yeah in um, in 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 so called you know the the commercial space like you're saying will will everybody allow that uh yeah there are deadlines there is a you know hectic quality to you know shooting a film collaborating with people being there on the set all of that but uh it's only during the writing time uh you have the privilege of finding that stillness uh that rhythm that space uh wherein you can uh, go back to your memories where you can go back to your childhood where you can go back to all those people you've met where you can relive your past and maybe some learnings from there some triggers from there and that is a slow process that is a time consuming process but that is the only uh, uh time where in entire filmmaking space most deepest things will ever come out rest the moment the script is ready everything becomes technical that okay actors need to sign down then you have to uh, uh, get the uh, shooting uh, production details and all that begins you know all the technical stuff begins from there and shoot per se for a director i'm sure it's the most nightmarish job because you're managing so many things so i feel that in cinema most meditative process is of yeah the the writing process is the only time where everything can can at leisure the at, at a leisurely pace can speak its own truth every character is willing to offer a lot more than than you are seeking actually as a writer if you form that relationship with them um it's going to be golden for your um, for the event the final work that that will come out from there and i feel uh, it has to be like that for me it must be like that for me because um yeah not everybody would be uh, uh 
ready to go through it but i'm sure there are a few people who are willing to hold my hand and and uh, you know walk with my pace also or, or actually you know once that pace is done a lot of other things can get easier i also feel that you don't need to go into multiple drafts you don't need to go through hours and hours of rewriting and and um, uh, arguments and deleting and editing and all of that see because it it has come from a very strong space of knowing of of you know awareness you've thought everything that has to be thought you explored it from all possible angles uh, whether it's the social angle to your film or whether it's the human angle in your film whether it's a spiritual angle to it whatever it is you have done everything possible and that time i, I think is the most purest time uh, of the entire process of of writing film of of cinema Julie, is that also the reason why, uh, you know, despite the fact that uh, the world is waiting to work with you, you've a chosen to work less, uh, b you've chosen to work with a specific set of people. Um, is this engagement that you have with your writing, uh, is it a conscious uh, choice where you've decided that this is the level of my involvement with the writing? uh a if i take up less work i would be able to do justice to whatever a i take up and b these are the people where i found uh you know a collaborative spirit where they completely understand what i bring to the table and my process uh is that the reason why you've not you know i mean after piku i know that practically the whole world wanted to sign you as a writer and um you know uh, you 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 said no to a lot of people and and uh, chosen to do exactly what worked for you yeah again you know i i just feel that uh, i'm not in a hurry right i i don't uh, have sense of time i don't have sense any i don't have any understanding of um, urgency it doesn't exist the only urgency that i have is to uh, um think of ideas to be with them to know more about them to about those ideas to uh, uh in that space how can i quickly get done with my day to day regular work so that i can be in my dream space i, I have urgency there yes when i come up with an idea my i can't control i have i'm i need to urgently call up either shujitha roni and it has to be vomited out immediately so <laughs> yes there is an urgency of that kind but is it an urgency to sign up a lot of projects no that urgency is not there because uh, like one is yeah that uh, you should do uh, i mean i will take time and i know uh, not just as a writer as a person also i'm going to invest a lot in it and and uh, therefore uh, and also see thing is now so i feel that if it was just about uh, getting money and all of that uh, just a commercial aspect of it which is also very important extremely important for writers for anyone uh, but but for that i was doing my job you know it was happening your uh, your salary your all of that was taken care of everything but when you leave that that purpose what is the intent why did i leave right if it was about uh, doing multiple projects so there were multiple campaigns i was doing parallelly but somewhere something was stifling there i was not getting a long term relationship with people and with my ideas with my thoughts because uh, the moment you put yourself out there there is so much to know there is so much of uh, uh, so much of truth so much of Uh, reality so much of um, lies so much of quest so much happens with every person right and how can i uh, just uh, cut it out and say bas teen mahina this is all i'm going to give you and move on or whatever happens in 3 months uh, it may take 6 months it may take 9 months it may take uh, less than that whatever I- i'm conscious of that but uh, it's very uh, like i said it's a very conscious decision to not do just about anything and everything i'm not going to um 
you know, succumb to that kind of pressure. That, that's my uh, intent as, a, as my life goal, that I will not succumb. Now, when you decide that, who are those people who help you, <laughs> or who get that? Uh, I have found Ronnie and Shajit, one of those lost souls, uh, who yeah. also sort of <laughs> operate uh, from uh, similar space. I, I can understand Ronnie's pressure. I can understand Shujit's pressure. There's a commercial aspect to things. Uh, but then I'm not the only person they're collaborating with. In between, they have, you know, collaborated with other writers and they've had great films. So uh, I get there for my, that little long space, uh, the, the, the time that I need. Uh, do I want to work with other people yeah why not it's not it's not like that i there's a no to it not at all it's just that uh, this is this is the space i come from and and uh, i'm not here to uh, churn out work but if you have the same quest as i do if you have the same requirement from uh, the 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 final product that we are going to see the the expression the the relationship that i'm willing to share with every character with every uh, moment of the film uh, then I'm, I'm sure there are a few people out there who will call me those people have not called me <laughs> only these people call me <laughs> whoever is listening juhi is open to working with other people now that you know a little bit about her process, do call her. She's open to uh, that level of engagement. To uh, coming to, you briefly touched upon nostalgia and I found that very interesting when we were, uh, you know, talking about writing and you said that, you said that it's very important to go back before you go forward when you're writing. Uh, the elements of nostalgia and memory really play a very uh, strong role uh, when you begin to write. Um, you said that you would really, you, you want that spark that comes from a purest, uh, you know, that comes from somewhere very pure, uh, an experience that is very pure. What is this nostalgia that you seek as a writer? See, uh, the nostalgia actually, it, it's, it's your experiences, uh, maybe your childhood experiences. When I say uh, from a pure space, because, you know, you're still not, maligned by uh, uh, or or you know you're still not cynical about things about people about life in general and and it, it, it is good to I, I for me it works that I go back to those purest moments that what were those things that that really affected me a lot because they did that in its most purest form whatever made me cry then whatever made me laugh then whatever uh, made me angry then, whatever. So I, I think they, they were very, um, uh, they came from a space of uh, purity. And uh, I go back there only because now I'm able to understand those moments better. I'm understand, I'm understanding without putting my cynical judgment over there. Okay. When you go back there, if, if I'm experiencing something, few things now, I may uh, uh, first, I may not have the time to invest because it's happening r right now. So I have to react to it in a in a uh, speed uh, which is of now, right? Uh, but uh, going back into the past allows you to again go back at your own sweet pace and linger the moment, stretch the moment, stretch that experience. That uski ek ek cheez that you're able to understand, decipher everything, you know, that introspection that you do. And there is so much more that you realize about your own self, about people, about, uh, um, you know, relationships, about everything, you know, all our worries and all our joys or all our doubts, everything I feel come from where you are coming from. And, and uh, that, for me, is, is, is a very pious, pure place. Uh, it's not just nostalgia. It's not just that I'm dwelling into my past. Like, uh, uh, in fact, uh, Shujit only says that don't uh, dig your past unless it's gold. So <laughs> do I 
uh, I get what he says, <laughs> but, but that's that's at a very. I agree with him only at a um, at a line level, at a surface level, and yeah, to some extent, yes. But as a writer, as, as a human being, I do go and I do dig and I dig and dig and dig only because because you know that is where my mistakes. Uh, um, stand there with a placard. That's where my uh, uh, moments of triumph stand uh, with the placard. With the placard, I, I must. Uh, your past, uh, your present is just slipping out. Your past is so definite. Yeah, absolutely. And this, this present, which is uh, slipping out is going to be a past soon. But that's when I'll understand the definite of definitiveness of this. I feel. I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but no, but no, I, I just no. feel that for me, uh, uh, the most definitive understanding comes from my past or anybody's past. Chui, uh, you know, Pico, Bhaskar, uh, BG, Dolly, Rana, Dan, Saeed, Banke, Mirza, Guddu, Christopher, uh, Fatima, Begum, Shiuli, Vidya. How do you build your characters? Because everyone talks about those characters. And like I had said in the introduction, it literally feels like, you know, you're seeing extensions of yourself. It's like delving into your world and your characters. It, it gives you somehow better understanding, not only of the people that you see on screen, but it kind of gets you to uh, look within. How do you build your characters, their universe, their motivations, their place in the world they inhabit? And, and everyone that they... Uh, encounter within that universe? Um, see, uh, first of all, I, I feel it's um, accepting a big truth that while they may just be characters and, and elements of fiction, uh, to me they are not. To me, they do exist in... in uh, it, it's like an energy farm, right? How is it that um, somebody that, like a Bhaskar Banerjee or, or a Piku Banerjee or Vidya Iyer, uh, they, uh, the moment you crack the name, actually, for me, it starts from there. The moment there is a name to a character, to a person, it somehow becomes real for me. Then there is no running away from them. Then from then on, the relationship begins. A Vidya Ayer is, is, is such a um, strong woman. She is going through that adversity. She's, she's dealing with her daughter's coma. She is going to uh, the college and still teaching there. She is dealing with her brother-in-law, who's every second day coming and saying, this is not going to work out. You're just, you know, wasting your money. She's coming from, you know, the kind of pressure that she's coming from. But in that also, the dignity and the strength that she's willing to share with me, how can I not allow her? How can I not say that, you know what, ah, you're just a mother character in that film. Yeah. You know, you're <laughs> grieving mom. Yeah, you're just a grieving mom with gray hair and lots of tears, and that's all you're supposed to do. And we are giving you only a few lines. So I don't need to know so much about you. But uh, you know, when there is a, there is a, you know, how plasticine, I, I feel your energy and the character, the energy of your character needs to have that kind of uh, 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 togetherness seamlessness and and then it automatically starts flowing into words words are the last things uh, the the writing is for me the last part of uh, uh, putting things in on paper is the last bit but what is there is, is the, uh, the the imaginary um, discussion the conversation that i do tend to have now this is a very this may not be uh, a very um, uh, may seem like an idiotic process <laughs> that who are you talking to but i do talk and that is my truth that i sit in my own little space and i do talk and and i do have these conversations and i um, agree with a lot of things which bhaskar 
does and i disagree with a lot of things that bhaskar does but that does not mean that i will omit those things because bhaskar is this person and he is going to behave like this with people you know when you uh, when you form that kind of relationship then you don't see yourself as as a person who's creating them you just see as a person who's partnering them or or letting them speak through you you just become a medium you know you uh, you also said that um, there was i mean i'm going a little uh, into the characters because um, clearly your process is working juhi um whatever it is that you're doing is working because people uh, you know just identify with these people they seem so real and and uh, so relatable and that is what every article that i read about you everything that i uh, you know consume about you says that there is just such inherent empathy uh, and uh, relatability uh, with which these characters are created that uh, you know small little dialogue small little layering that you've done with the characters they're so life like that people remember the characters as much as they remember the story so uh, there was this debate uh, when you were uh, writing october whether shiuli should live or not mm. and and um, that debate was resolved by your own you know the way you created shiuli um can you talk a little bit about you know the the reason why you felt um the way you did and the movie ended the way it did see again uh, it it started with that how will that uh fateful night turn out will it be an accident will it be um a health issue that will take her into coma or whether it will be falling down from the terrace um, but the moment uh, you decide that the name of this girl is shuli shuli is a short lived flower and and a flower that falls down every night from the shuli tree so for uh, most um, so it just solved my problem that a shuli will not go through an accident a shuli will not have an health issue um, or a health scare she will fall down uh, because that's what the flower does um why should she die um yes this this argument uh, i had with uh, discussion sorry had with chujit also and i had both i i had written her death but i also wanted to explore what if she lives and we had a very very good uh, uh, debate on that but um you know you realize that uh, some people uh, have that short life um and and or they come into your life with a very specific role you know so uh, you may wonder that how come this person died at just the age of 20 or 21 um you know she was so pretty everything was going fine with her and she had found dan also who was a changed man so why kill the girl why kill the girl it's not about yeah in the film it may seem why kill the girl at a very you know shallow uh uh space it seems like but if you again see from life's point of view life's point of view people die an early death but but in that time also they've come with a very specific agenda very specific kare and shuli's kare or agenda or the role that she was sent with is that you will take dan from this karmic level to this karmic level from where he is in his life currently before he has met shuli to where he comes he reaches after shuli has left her left him so you know that journey has to happen in dan's life and shuli has been placed in dan's life just to quickly elevate him right now these are not the things for a film uh uh for a film to underline or for a uh, purpose of cinema but but these are understandings that i have from life or or my quest to understand people and i do look at characters coming back to that point from that point of view that what is his role why is bhaskar just not settling down with his issues you know uh why is uh vicky behaving or dolly ji being the way she is or why is mirza eventually 
left with nothing because you're given enough chances in life. Therefore, and Mirza has not, Mirza started only at a very uh, 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 wrong, with a very wrong intention in his life. Yeah, at 20, even if he was 20 when he married Begum, Begum was 15, 16 years older than him. He may have been 20 and begun at 35. In that time, in those years, was a long gap itself. And his intention to marry a woman older than him was the Haveli itself. It was never the love. So when you start... He took and all decisions in his, his entire life. life. He spent an entire <sighs> life with that wrong. So he must be, uh, you know, that, that must be the end to his... his uh, journey in that sense in, uh, of his greed, not life, but his greed. It must uh, provide him with nothing. And, uh, uh, you know, he's given, he, he removes the bulb. He steals the bulb. He removes that source of light. He removes the chandelier. Cells of the chandelier, another source of knowledge and light is removed from the light. Light. You know, he switches off the fuse completely. Purai light source ban kar diya apni zindagi ka. The whole source of what is light? Light is symbol of knowledge, and you you just removing that one by one, one by one. Of course, you're going to land up in that situation. And and uh, I need to know that much about every person in 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 uh, that comes in contact with me through my writing. Uh, Chuhi, when you, uh, you know, it's great for us because we get to see these characters that we thoroughly enjoy and stories that we completely identify with. Yeah. Uh, but when um, your exploration is this deep, when your engagement is this deep, um, and also when you're going uh, to memory and experience and nostalgia and kind of layering it uh, with your own experiences, because I know that, uh, you know, um, you were a caregiver to your mother for about 30 years. October, uh, you know, sort of came out of that. Uh, your relationship with your father um, uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the very idea of aging and how one responds to uh, that process. Um, Lucknow is the city that you grew up in and you've said in interviews that Lucknow taught you to write, you know, and, and you came to Lucknow after three films. When you when you do this and and Piku starting from Piku when you said that you got an awareness as a writer that you know mm -hmm. that's where you went in with your eyes open and you knew that this is this is what you needed to invest how draining I know it's fulfilling but how draining is the process uh, when you delve uh, deeper and deeper and deeper it happens parallelly you you think you are getting drained out but actually that energy is only pushing you further you know it, it is not uh, it is not either draining or fulfilling it is uh, it is um, it's 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 something that is uh, um, providing you with with you know one step at a time one memory at a time one uh, awareness at a time one uh, uh, learning at a time it, it gets really addictive you know, and, and it's very difficult to then uh, leave that space and say, okay, this much is enough. It is, it is not draining. It is, uh, that energy is different. It's, it's difficult to explain what, what kind of energy works there. Uh, and, and believe me, uh, it sometimes is also like, a, you know, when, when a child birth the process of childbirth, you may be screaming and shouting and whatever, all that. But the moment child is born, you forget the pain, you think that were you acting? <laughs> what was that screaming about? It just ends. It, you just forget. Right now, I have no memory of the uh, uh, um, those late nights that one puts in or, or the zone that you're uh, living in while you're writing Piku or October or while writing October, I did go back to Leelavati uh, Hospital and I just wanted to relive that smell of hospital. And of course, that means that you're putting yourself out there to relive all those, uh, uh, um, you know, slightly troublesome uh, memories. But, uh, you know, it's, 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 worth, it's worth it. And you can't run away. See, again, point is you can't escape. Good, bad, ugly, you can't escape. And you must not. And why things come out... Uh, not everything is memory that is out there uh, in my writing. 
sometimes it's just memories are triggers your experiences are triggers but um you know the best way to explain a lot of things or write them or make them relatable for people at large is what you have experienced yourself personally it comes from a very solid truth inside right and and um that's the most um easiest perhaps um process that that uh, or most convincing not easiest it it becomes most convincing if it, it has affected me in certain way um let me try and share this with you in some form not that exact form but from here on what can i bring for you and and uh, share and 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 it and usually it is convincing therefore because it's a, it's coming from a space of conviction uh do we uh, basically uh, you know just to um i want to bring in a technical question here that um you know when you are exploring characters when you are writing uh, you know you go to experience you also explore further you go deeper you go in all sorts of directions right uh, what is your source material apart from uh, experience apart from your own understanding uh, what is your process like in terms of external sources like research or uh, conversations with other people or one of the biggest things that makes a character relatable apart from the life experience is the spoken language yeah. if somebody speaks like me if i can identify that language it mm-hmm. becomes my biggest connection yeah. with that milieu mm-hmm. right so uh, in the process of uh, creating your world uh what are your external sources uh in terms of building them so starting from uh, dikki dono for example um mm, delhi was my um, you know delhi was where i had lived for few years experienced that first hand and yeah language that menu the uh, house the set up the the uh, you know the um people they were all of that you know it was uh, it was a first hand experience and that's why perhaps I, i wrote that as my first film because at least uh, that was in my favor i knew that much right i i did not know how to write a screenplay but at least i knew how the people in my film are going to speak or what are the kind of houses they are living in you right when you say that uh, these things make the characters relatable therefore what is my research material like for example in in piku i had never um been to calcutta actually before uh we shot peak over there but uh all of that um when i was researching about uh, calcutta and why i was researching is because there is a calcutta in my mind which is very similar to what lucknow is you know given our historical uh, uh, similarities the 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 british um, colonial uh, our common history uh um the the a lot of our architecture is similar in terms of like um say the hazard ganj of lucknow and uh the main street of park street of calcutta very similar you know uh, windows with louvers you know things like that and in general you know the food maybe also because the nawabs did run away from avadh to calcutta to bengal so a lot of things are are similar culturally i was growing up with bengalis uh, bengali family so there was a bengal that they had created in my mind so i when i was writing i wrote a lot from my um, from the calcutta or the bengal that i had in my own mind through my friends and all but i did uh, um i did uh, go through say um google maps the the those live maps to see those places you know the the areas that i have written in the script that this would be happening there then this church will be there then this trams will be crossing from that area and all of that so uh, the the physical part of the the the, the geography that the city provides or or the the menu that the city provides you know the monuments the streets the name of the streets that that goes in your you know regular search but more important is um uh, the search of the people of the, again the characters in it that if bhaskar banerjee is coming 
uh, ha has spent his uh, early years in Calcutta. It's only for his job that he moved to Delhi. He will have the craving back, like any Kolkata Bengali, to go back to his roots. And so he is that man. And uh, he would have uh, read a certain kind of literature in his growing up years because that is what is expected from a uh, from good uh, Bengali boys. There would be certain kind of music playing, and he would have forced it upon Piku because Bengali hai. So Piku also comes from that, and and she reacts. He just says, "Satyajit Ray ki movie nahi dekhi ek bhi. Usko naam hi malum to usse main baad hi kya kar sakte ho." <laughs> and this is a Delhi girl speaking. Mind you, this is a Delhi girl speaking. Piku is Delhi girl for all practical purposes. But her environment must, her upbringing must have those elements which a pure red Bengali girl goes through. So now, those are the things that Telegraph is the most important newspaper, most important piece of paper in a Bengali person's life. Uh, I must know that if I'm writing a film which is based there. So uh, I, I do like to find out those details. Some come from my knowledge. Some I, I do extend myself. Yeah. You do extend yourself. Yes. Too. Yes. I like I said in the beginning that everything that must be known you emotionally or as information I should know. Only then I know what to keep and what to remove. Right. Uh, Jui, um, e every film that you've written, you've uh, done it start to finish. The story, the dialogues, the screenplay, and you've also done publicity design, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Not left that at all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> like, I'm not letting go of so much experience. I've studied that. So, um, you know, you said that uh, usually when you're writing, it's like start to finish. It's, you know, you start from page one, scene one and everything. But... In Piku, uh, you broke format and uh, you wrote a 16-page scene, which is that yeah. scene where they're celebrating um, the mother they've lost. They're yeah. celebrating her birthday. So everybody is getting together and there's a feast yeah. in the house. Yeah. Uh, and that was a 16-page scene that you wrote. Uh, why did you do that? Why did you break format and write this and then send it to Shujit to kind of have a look at, you know, yeah. what he's in for? <laughs> See, because... Uh, uh, First of all, the idea of Piku, there was no idea as such. It's just a father-daughter relationship, right? And it can be many things. It can be many kinds of relationship. And uh, just, again, it seems that, yeah, she'll be a daughter who is uh, willing to have her own, who wants her own life, but there's a father who is extremely selfish and doesn't want her to, uh, you know, meet boys or, or get married and all of that. But within that also, what is the uh, soul of these people? What is the uh, chaos of this Banerjee family? This uh, was one scene I felt which would have uh, shown everything to uh, Shajit without me having to speak so much. He would have read everything that is there about Bhaskar, about Piku, about Mashi, about Misho, about Mother, about her about the men in her life, about the crisis of everything that is there that the film is uh, wanting to also say. The, also the gossip back home when she says that she is wearing a dress without a bra. Exactly, yeah. Correct, everything. So, yeah, the politics, the entire politics of Banerjee family is there for uh, uh, A, to me to, for me to write and to understand. See, like, there are people who will write a story first. That's the expected, that you write a story first, you write synopsis first, then you write the, uh, you know, the one-liners, uh, sketch outline, and then you start writing the screenplay, and then comes the stage of writing the dialogues. It doesn't ever work for me like that. Never. Because uh, for me, everything is happening parallelly. One thing is leading into another. How I cannot commit to a story right in the beginning. For me, I have huge commitment phobia when it comes to writing a story and writing on that. Because I know that while writing, it is going to change. Because my characters, they are going to take the lead. They, what if they don't let me do that? When I'm writing a story, it's a very, uh, you know, it's slightly detached relationship. 
because i still don't know how my character is speaking i still don't know where all they are going uh, the the conversation between rana and piku uh, when she says uh, you know when she is asking him about her his past and he speaks about anuradha and and now that i will not know at uh, story stage at that moment the purity of 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 that scene when uh, uh, rana stops while driving and he's splashing his face with water when he's tired and they're about to reach kolkata in few hours how do you uh, uh, you can't write that you know you know while writing the story that um, happens the of it, the, the the characters offer it themselves to you and that happens only in the process of writing the screenplay along with the dialogues i feel for me and you so at least I, have a basic idea in mind like yeah, yeah of course i have an i have a basic idea in mind and that even of course the director will also know what he is getting into so that he also starts thinking about it i mean god as soon as i share the idea i create a world and she is creating a world and it must at some level collaborate and and be uh, and and should work in sync it can't be that he is imagining another thing and i'm writing something else so of course he's aware in in that sense that what i'm writing to words and he also knows the purpose of making a particular film that's very clear right in the beginning but uh, you can't say that this is only the story these 30 pages you've written and now this is what it is it will never be for me and if it is it will be a lot of uh, i feel restricted writing then i i know i should know the basic therefore that scene for me is the story of the film because see before that vicky dona he had that one liner and all and it worked but piku was my one was my more serious attempt in writing and now if i have to write the story of her father daughter i don't know what i'll write so i wrote that scene that if this works this is the story of the film this is the story of bhaskar's life this is the story of piku's life if this works then this will work so therefore i sent that to shudit as the story of the film ki hai kya ye and it worked because it says the lines the dialogues the everything it says you know and and that is what uh, uh, ideally uh, helps people decide normally if it is or it isn't yeah you know uh, when shruti gets excited about uh, you know when he sees something and he gets excited about it he does share it with people he feels potentially can play them you know mm. with actors uh, and um, i know that when you were writing piku um, you know you knew that irfan will play rana and uh, mr bachchan will play uh you know bhaskar but you didn't know who's going to play piku uh does knowing who is going to be cast in the role or the character that you're exploring or at least have explored to a certain extent uh help with the writing um like dan i did not know who would play dan so uh in certain cases uh i mean certain characters you know that this character has to be played by this person only but even if you don't know it is it's fine because uh, the character is not dying to become someone else character is dying to be who he or she is the character is yeah. yeah yeah i don't want to become a dipika i don't want to become a amita bachchan i don't become, want to become anyone else i want to remain a rana i want to remain bhaskar i want to remain piku so uh, characters are not saying that but who will play me so they don't have that crisis going on so i am very uh, i don't let that crisis affect the writing at all having said that if i know what helps that you know certain nuances like rana for example with uh, irfan because i knew that irfan and and i was a little greedy i wanted to work with irfan and and <laughs> <laughs> so um, and shudit wasn't sure at that point in time that you know it, would he do this because it's not such a big role like it's all that i mean he knew that uh, if if he agrees it would be the best for the film but you know it was a slightly different mix of uh, actors uh, it's but, one of the best men i've seen on screen joey oh so yes this I'm is so no, you know it is uh, i mean that kind of uh, 
what what irfan could do i mean I, i don't know if there was anything anyone else it was possible for anyone else to do but uh, his demeanor his understanding of life people you if you give him this much and he'll take out that much right so uh, therefore it was slightly difficult also to write rana's character to always keep him एक मेच्योर आदमी एक समझदार सुलझा हुआ आदमी जो होता है वो यू नो ही इज नॉट क्रिएटिंग एनी ड्रामा इन द फिल्म ही इज नॉट डूइंग एनी थिंग ही इज जस्ट देयर राइट सो हाउ डू यू मेक इट कन्विंसिंग फॉर अदर्स नॉट दी एक्टर एक्टर नोज वॉट इट मीन्स द डायरेक्टर नोज वॉट इट मीन्स दिस मैन इज लाइक दिस बट फॉर सो मेनी अदर पीपल हुर इन्वॉल्व इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ यू मेकिंग यू नो कुछ तो दो इसको कुछ तो दो बट लाइफ में हर जने की लाइफ में कुछ तो होता नहीं है you know no there, there are people who are just that and they that is how that is what their core is that they will not cross that line unnecessarily that they will not unnecessarily pounce upon you that they are not going to make use of the situation that they are seeking themselves and they are seek they think their the, the life or the hope that they are seeking perhaps lies in the journey that you guys are going to take But he is so miserable inside himself, Rana. He he goes to Saudi, and his uh, 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 passport has been kept away. He he is thrown out of the job there. He can't even come back because it's a three month, three year contract, and that's a reality of a lot of people. And he is also an bechara, who has a mother and sister who are of a certain kind, and that's not what he associates because it's a. there's an inherent righteousness in that man he is so uh, he is uh, despite all of this he is a very even tempered man yeah you yeah. know the tempered he's practical you know little things that are unacceptable to him are not like he doesn't take umbrage correct you know? yeah yeah he's not heroic there yeah he's he's not he's not hitting those beats uh, yeah you know, he's not hitting those yeah. Yeah, it, it, when it comes to, when Piku is coming there, all angry, Rana is looking at Syed. Syed is looking at Rana. That you know, why don't you say no? I think you only talk to her. So there's a that that is Piku's personality, and and um, even before Deepika came on board, it was that. But the moment she did said that it's going to be played by Deepika, or or let's just meet her. Uh, um, you know, the the thought itself was so fresh. You know, there's certain. names of certain personalities they just spark that uh, joy boring from mary kondo <laughs> <laughs> no she <laughs> also the because she says that she had the best time she was in a great space in her life and the joy just uh, quadrupled when she was working on piku she has spoken in many interviews and also at the a uh, mami mela last year we did a master class with her and she just speaks about pico as an experience that she will carry uh, with her all the time but but that's exactly what you just said that it's uh, cinema must be an experience you know the process of making writing creating uh shooting and then you know as an audience viewing it must have uh, a life like quality to it it cannot be that it becomes alive only after it is finished and done and released it has life even before even it becomes even before it becomes idea must have that pulse in it that heartbeat only then it will be able to in you know to breathe that oxygen out into you if on its own it doesn't have it you you will feel like you're watching plastic that's true uh you know juhi you said that um, actually putting pen to paper is the last thing in your writing process yeah um so when you're pondering a character when you're building a character when you're thinking about the character and you're gathering all your material everything before you how when do you feel um i i know it's i i i'm sure it's a feeling but i'm still curious to know that when do you feel a character you can commit to this character now this character is somebody you can commit to and now um like what is the 
starting point of their storytelling journeys you've known them them enough you you've had enough one on ones with them <laughs> you sort of feel that that um, yeah it's a feeling it's a feeling like take, take the example of just give me two examples like for example um i would say a uh, dan uh, right. or or for that matter bg or yeah. for that matter uh, you know pico um mm-hmm. like when did you feel that or oh, monkey like mm-hmm. when did you feel that okay fine now this has formed now i can i've given it enough shape it has enough meat it's alive in my head and right. now i can put it to you know flesh it yes. up see a uh, 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 lot of time goes my lot of time goes in in just writing the names of the people it's really uh, name surname name surname name surname which part of the country which region which school which uh, college india abroad which social sector uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, society um, all of that friends neighbors brothers sister it's a full on it's everything about them most of the things most uh, uh, see one is the information right uh, it may seem like that which school did he go to is just an information but for me if someone has gone to lamatnia uh boys hostel will be of a certain kind and a person who has gone to say uh, gyanbati school in delhi will be of a certain kind they completely two different environments and that environment is going to lead into his personality is going to shape him up so it's important for me to know where or whether it's in the vidyalaya or whether it's sarkari school or whether it is uh, whatever whatever it is uh, nuclear family or um, joint family purana ghar ki naya ghar bada sheher ki chhota sheher you know there are so many things which seem like information Uh, but but for me they are the they are the truth of the character just the way my upbringing is me a character upbringing is extremely important for the character why rana is the way he is or why sayed is the way he is or why people is the way or dan the way he is you know very he, why is he such a rebel dan for what reason is he such a rebel i mean he's he's gone to a fairly decent school he may have gone to dps kind of school if he was posted in delhi his parents if if you know he seems like a very that boy dps uh, a lot of pressure that what are you going to do about your life what subjects have you decided you know always questioned he comes from an army background his parents are in army there's always a certain environment in the house that you're expected to only go beyond that but he comes uh from a mindset that he doesn't even know if he wants to do engineering or medical or whatever else in his life he doesn't have those answers so becoming uh, to to go and do hotel management may just be okay at least it's professional course it not that it saves uh, the face of the parents that he's he's doing a professional course he comes from that environment where his career choice may have not been his own look at that scene that one scene the mother comes to see him right yeah mother scene dance mother that kind of mother wouldn't have allowed ki whatever you feel like doing in life you do yes whatever you feel like doing in life but it must be this 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 ya yeah, isme se choose kar lo kar lo ha tumko nahi samajh mein aa raha hai to ye hai nahi to ye hai nahi to wo hai nahi to wo hai so he must have gone through all that crisis and therefore there's an anger within him because he himself does not know so many things he does not have answers and therefore he is just rebelling against everything to find what he really can connect with he is not able to connect with anything in life therefore there's that gussa for every smallest thing there is a frustration that there is a certain kind of irritation in him because uh, and then there, there also he's saying this is not what i want to do i want to actually start my own business there also he he is not yet settled and that's also not the truth that as a seriously that he wants to start his own business there is a there is a guy who just does not know and that's fine and therefore 
something he must know and that is a much bigger truth of life and that truly will help him he as his 30 will not be the same guy at all after going through that experience and also where is dan then becomes far more yeah, philosophical where is yes it does that which is which is really asking yourself where are you where are you as a in in this whole universe where do you stand how do you exist you know uh, juhi we've got a lot of questions but i am going to ask you two more and then yeah. open the house out for questions because people are just like they're just, they're just pouring in i find the women and men both fascinating in your films and i think everyone would agree uh, with that uh, you know financial independence is a big motif in your film with regard to women they progressive willful real um and not only women i mean they they are infused with this inherent sense of freedom but even the men in your film are men that you want to see you know one of the things that even zoya and reema said was that one of the ways in which they ensure that there is a female gaze or there is a you know a gender sensitivity that we keep talking about is also by putting on screen a uh, men that we want to actually see you know because uh, so is this um is this uh, by design like when you're creating this are you aware of uh, is is this even do these considerations even play in your mind you know when you're creating these characters um yes uh, to some extent i think it's it's pretty intentional that um men are um in even if they have a limited um world vision like the key for that matter there is a certain dignity that he will live or play with it because I, i i feel that it's extremely important to show or or i would like to believe that mothers from their side at least some of them through my characters i can show a certain kind of upbringing and conversations of home and in case of rana it is lacking but that man's personal quest can identify can differentiate that what is not him and what is him when his uh, when he is just about to leave for kolkata when he is still deciding and he sees his mother and sister sleeping in the middle of the night and he looks at them the way they are sleeping that itself is very putting off for him mane even in their sleep they don't seem innocent and nice like that may have been his last hope that <laughs> you know maybe when i see them sleeping something about them might stop me maybe in the waking hours i don't find them uh, uh um fiosos but maybe when they are asleep there will be a motherly their character there or a sisterly character there but he 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 lacks that in in his so he rather be with these banerjees than be with his own kind now that uh, um, i would like to believe that there are men like that who do seek um who 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 are looking for some kind of sincerity who are themselves sincere and if they are not they are wanting to be uh we all are work in progress nobody is nobody has arrived as yet you will arrive when you're gone actually that's the truth of life <laughs> <laughs> you work on yourself you like yeah so then you are work in progress so uh so that that's important to dwell into that what kind of work this man is putting behind himself the sincerity of sayed uh or even to chadda for that matter there is a crooked cunning businessman in him but I, I, at a uh, there, there is a human quality in him as well when he goes and 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 he talks to uh, though he has gone there for his own purpose and he is he he lands up in in uh, uh, Vicky's home but there is something that um, pushes him I mean I'm, I'm saying that uh, or whether it's Bhaskar or whether it's uh, Uh, in in gulabo even baki for example 
I mean, he's not a crooked guy. He's just a he. He is just uh, a victim of his uh, poverty, of his uh, lack of education, of his uh, tough uh, struggle. Is his you know, jaddo jahar jodti as a movie ki. He is just a victim of that. He very sincerely tells uh, Fauzia ki dekho. I live in such a small room, and I have five people staying there. My sisters, three sisters, and my mother. They take shower in that kitchen. How am I going to get married? So he's very sincere about his relationship with Fazia. I mean, he's navigating his circumstances. Circumstances, he's... yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, it comes a point that okay, if not me, then not even you. Then with Mirza, it's a different equation. It's a different character. Yes, but otherwise, he's he's not a bad guy. Because uh, in life, in in world, in in God's creation, I, there are good people around us. All of us, there are good men, there are good women. I mean, I I wouldn't want to just throw it out there that all men are bad. That's like saying everybody got created as bad. No, I I don't. I disagree with that. Uh, I I do believe it's a beautiful creation, and we are all, uh, you know. struggling to find ourselves even the ones who we write off are also the ones who have not been able to come to terms with the uh, with the expectations of people around them or 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 they've not been able to understand a right from wrong and that's really actually a very sad situation to be in that to you go through an entire life a wonderful life without knowing that how many wrongs you've just going on doing going on doing going on doing and that's such a Poor birth. That's such a sad birth. And and um, so uh, yeah, I I do think that my men also have that constant quest to better themselves, to to find that uh, human in them. And uh, men, women, old people, everyone. even uh, even with women you know because um like in um in wiki donor you have dolly and bg and uh, it's not as if dolly and bg are sitting and drinking because they've turned men because they're earning wiki yeah, yeah. is the ghar ka ladka and the thing yeah. is there is certain they've been looking out after themselves they run a business they've led life on their own terms there is a certain freedom that comes with that there's a certain agency that comes with that even if it's coming Uh, yes. in the being in the living room or for yes. that matter and you know you'd spoken uh, about this very interesting uh, you know analysis that you've yes. done in do in masoom and rt in mahanagar um yes. so when you're writing your women uh, that is a motif that is, that is always there yeah see uh, talking about indu or uh, rt now rt for example For whatever the reasons, the circumstances that her husband uh, loses her his job and there's actually no money at home to uh, run it, um, she takes up this job and she's going door to door selling the sewing machine, and and it's it's not an easy task given uh, the year uh, the the times it is made in. But with that scene where um, husband finds the lipstick. Uh, lipstick in her purse. and something which she hasn't even bought herself it's her friend her anglo friend who has given her and that little moment that little joy that she finds that she goes in the washroom in the office and and, and workplace and she puts that lipstick so the moment her husband spots that and you know questions her without really questioning he sees that she doesn't respond to it through explanation she doesn't build up excuses she doesn't give any uh, 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 um reasons that oh actually it's not me it's my friend i was this there's no blabbering she looks straight into the eyes and she flicks it outside the window and she just stares at him where does that come from it comes from a an absolute uh you know as a human being there's nothing to be doubted in me okay she is aware of that and secondly is her financial independence she is the person who is running the house okay and and uh, if this is what is bothering you here chuck it it's not even important enough for me to give you an answer for this a uh, a uh, uh, 
woman who was not working and if she was questioned she would have given hundreds of excuses for something like that because she doesn't want anything to go wrong against her but a working woman in a very subtle way and i'm not saying it as a working woman or a non working woman but the truth is that there is a certain amount of license that you can take there is a certain you know you can push the envelope that much more in our country or anywhere in the world when you know that you are not asking for money that's a very big thing. agency that comes yes that agency same but but in the case of indu in masoom i have thought that if she was a working person do you think she would have handled this situation in the way indu does or she would have walked out of the house given the fact that she didn't need um, you know dk and uh, or or she would have stayed back or she would have just allowed him to give all the excuses which he gave or whatever uh, but but then the answer that i found uh, is it's not really so much working or not working but in the case of indu it's it's the mother in her who holds the family together the wife in her is is tormented is angry wants to go away and maybe can't because of the financial restrictions but the mother in her is so big that uh, that that takes over a woman might be feeling cheated but the mother has the power to uh, you know overcome the wife in her must be feeling cheated but the uh, the strength of a mother can empower any kind of situation and make it all right and treat it as a very big error but still let's move on it's it's about human choices so it's, it's, it's about yeah. human choice yeah but 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 if she was if she was uh, a working woman maybe maybe she would have just said that you know what balls to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Bye bye. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. One, one last question from my side, and of course, uh, I'm fascinated by this. Uh, is that um, senior people in your films are very alive? You know, they have personalities, uh, they have agency, they have an opinion. Uh, they're not placeholders. कि ये बाप है और ये माँ है और ये दादा जी हैं. You know, they 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 are full bodied characters, uh, and they have a space. uh in your world the way uh, they have a space in our world yeah. so how do you uh, always find such a humane and real place for them in your narratives to begin with like you said they they are people who exist around us in our world they are not uh placeholders they are not there for the heck of it they are the people who have given you birth or they are related to you in some way or the other so they do form a very important part of the social structure that that we are that we so call a family you know a, a family is not just a young man and a young woman and a small child a family is a father a mother or grandparents or uncles and aunts that is what our understanding of a family is it may uh, that's a separate question that do we need a family structure what is it it's all man made you know all that that's a separate thing uh, uh, but but the fact is that um uh, just because a person is growing old does not mean that his existence uh can be uh you know nullified that as if he doesn't exist it will be the arrogance of youth i feel to not uh, uh uh welcome an old man and and i do believe that elderly is are like you know bargat ka pe like what we were discussing that how can you how can you uh neglect its presence how can you you cannot you cannot you know ignore the presence of of a, a tree that old you cannot wisdom lies there whether we like it or we don't like it we can question it we can argue it we can change it but that wisdom lies and it's for us to either uh, uh, um question it debate it change it but you can't say that it doesn't exist an 80 year old man means an 80 year old wisdom a 40 year old man means only 40 year wisdom so you are half your wisdom is half of 
just by experience forget the number of books you've read forget the number of places you've been forget all the intellectual stuff that you have created around yourself the very fact that a person has lived 40 years more than you is your senior in it's in, in his or her intellect i mean at a very basic level i'm saying at a very basic yeah and you cannot ignore that you may not agree with it and most of the times you know that's why bg has a agency or, or that liberty to say the way she speaks because you know she doesn't want to get into justifying things to her daughter in law or to anyone else if she wants a television which is 42 inches or 52 inches she wants it but it's not she's not seeing it from materialism point of view we may decode it like that but she's she's reached a point where she doesn't need to justify anything to anyone she's also slightly more easy going like easy going yeah and because we, Dolly is still, because Dolly is still, because Dolly is still running the house. Dolly is still, exactly. uh, you know, struggling to make uh, the ends meet till Vicky starts earning. So Dolly is a man of the house, actually. Exactly. Right, and in fact, uh, uh, um, BG was not there in the first draft. BG, and that is so. Sometimes the characters. Uh, are so like what we were discussing earlier that they are so well formed that at some point in time you just have to start writing and sometimes you start writing and you miss presence of someone ah. you know that something is lacking something is not right in this draft something is not right because that one person was missing in Vicky Donor BG was missing and she came with that energy and made the house complete because otherwise a, a widow mother and a son that third uh, angle which bg provides the the uh, debate the arguments the tutu meme of that house the noise of that house actually comes from bg or the noise of wisdom in that house comes from bg and that also connects them more to the journey that that they've had as people and that's why I, I feel it's important to have all people in your houses or with them or relationship with them or whatever. It's not for them. It is, it, it, that is how it is. They, they do exist. We cannot ignore, I repeat, we cannot just ignore. Yeah, children and, children and old people should not be templatized the way sometimes they tend to. Yeah, yeah. Cinema is, yeah, filmmaking or writing or creativity is not only about... Uh, a section of the society within that whatever happens within that whatever happens is because of what has happened in the past and whatever is dying to happen through the children you have to be mindful of that sometimes uh, animals the cats and the dogs in the family will will, will bring that thought to you right so i i just feel the that it has to be inclusive it's not just about are we having enough men in our films are we having enough women in our films are we having enough human beings in our film? Are we having enough human quality to our films? And it's not really about, um, it's not man, woman fight. It's not a fight actually at all. To me, anybody who comes from uh, slight, that, that space of awareness and, and sensitivity um, will be inclusive and mindful of uh, people and their purpose. So, so characters are taking in your narratives. Characters are taking decisions according to the people they are, and it's not really it's it's who they are from inside, and that's why they decide one thing or the other. Yeah. Um. So, um, Juhi, there were a lot of questions that came in uh, from Facebook, uh, lots of people who are watching, but most of those questions you've answered, just one question that Faiz Khan is asking. He said that, uh, you know, everybody is saying that people's attention span is getting shorter. And I remember you and I discussed it a little bit, and yet you wrote a movie like October, which is so meditative. Um, do you keep these things in mind while writing the story when people say that, you know, when, when you think about like what is happening to this generation in terms of their attention span? Um, see, what is happening to them and their attention span, it is their problem. It is not my problem. To begin with. <laughs> <laughs> they have to work hard 
to stay focused and all of that. But you know, that when you again, when I'm saying, if you're consuming um, content, first of all, why is there hurry to create a lot of content? Because when there's a hurry to create a lot of content, there's a hurry to consume a lot of content. So I think that's another pandemic going on parallelly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's lots, 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 the rush. Yeah, there's a big rush to put out everything, to put everything out there. But, you know, again, uh, what is the hurry? What is the problem in something being slow? Unless and until you live that experience in a film like October, there is a world outside the hospital which is running at a different pace altogether. People are living their normal lives, uh, office, cure, school, you know, running off a house, meeting deadlines and all of that. Inside a hospital, there is no sense of time. Day and night look the same when you're inside the corridors of a hospital and all those white tube lights are on. You will know there's no sun peeping through the windows of the hospital corridor. Never, because there are rooms there and those rooms are shut and there are people who are dying or living or struggling or dealing with the issues so you are you know it's it's like a suspended you know it's it's not this time is not the same for a person who's inside a hospital right it's very slow when a person comes change of duty happens the uh, 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 attendant comes some the attendant comes and give exchanges the card and seven o'clock you know i would go suppose in the morning from seven to nine o'clock, suppose, when the doctors would start coming, it would feel as if I've already lived the day between two hours, just those two hours. There is no speed, and I'm not. Uh, uh, um, I, I'm not. Sure. There's no hurry for me to speed up. See what happens. You're in your real life. You will say that okay, one man is cycling. He is there. Now he is here. Now he is here. Now he is here. But in cinema or in, uh, you know, the way we are consuming content now, man is here, tuck, 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 he's at that point. Your eye does not move with him. I'm saying allow, I mean, don't go through those cuts in some cinema, in some form of viewing. It's okay for, uh, sometimes it needs to be slow because it, it, it wants you to experience the same pace of, the hospital it the wants you to experience of, of its world that it's created in it cannot be your pace it's still a one hour 10 minute one hour 20 minute film and so in terms of time there's nothing the discomfort comes that oh why is something not happening yes something need not happen every time it's all right if you see a man just sitting and biting his nails. Try and understand why is he doing this. It's okay. Julie, you have to tell everyone. Now it's been 5 months of the pandemic. Everyone is sitting there. Nobody has exactly. any... So, so that word, I say, what is the guy? You, you cannot. We cannot. We must accept and surrender to the pace another power wants us to move in. There's no urgency. There's Truth no. is, there shouldn't be an urgency. Urgency should only be to interact with you, allow you to experience. I'm, I am. I must have that urgency to have certain kind of uh, relationship with myself, or or the moments that I'm sharing with you, the conversations I'm sharing with you. There is an urgency to uh, uh, feel that, but beyond that, or or to do certain kind of things. But other than that, no matter what pace you decide for yourself things do happen at the right time at the right moment only so let's not run and make everything like a, a, a you know alarm clock way life does not play there yeah? no no i agree with you and also at a, at a personal level i just feel that you yeah. know it's the, it's the culture of rush uh, and the culture to get somewhere without like uh, anything without even looking at the rigor that it involves or what it means um, also causes deep rooted anxiety, which all of us feel, you know, that rush ke saath hamesha nervousness or anxiety to aate hai. Um, but, um, uh, you know, now I, th there are, there are, there's a room full of people who are with us on this session, Julie. Please, can we, can we unmute Vibha? Yeah, Vibha, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, 
Hello, ma'am. Uh, yeah. So, I wanted to ask when you're writing screenplays and stories, how, the process is very uh, important and you know very uh, interactive with the characters. Just say, आपने बोला. So, how closely you work with the DOP since they interpret in a in a different way, right? So, yeah. how do you work with them? How closely you work with them? Uh, in fact, uh, that's a lovely question that you asked, Sabha, because. Um, uh, you may be writing something you may be seeing something but there's another eye which is the eye of the cinematographer and in last two films uh, uh, ubigda he uh, ubik mukhopad there he has uh, been the wonderful camera person for gulabo satabo and october uh, i have actually learned a lot while working with him because uh, um, um, how, how you can, can show a city, city Without, without showing, showing or, or with, with I mean, you can show the city, city show all, all the chaos of that city, of, of the, the old parts, parts of the city, and, and yes, yet, yet find a very soothing rhythm, rhythm in it. You can show a hospital. You can show those uh, um, extremely sanitized uh, um, corridors there, but you can still find poetry there, and that I think that beauty which camera can do, or not. that that's a very important part of filmmaking and uh, just by uh, looking at the way he frames uh, um, he makes his frames i think there's a huge learning there for me and and you start writing your scenes uh, keeping that in mind that if if x person were to shoot the scene what would he see which i am missing so um, it, it it just um, gives you that much more deeper knowledge of the environment um, you are trying to create hi everyone first of all thank, thank you for this. this thank you for doing this and this has been the most insightful session uh, i want to ask you about this particular scene in peeku uh, mm-hmm. when they all, uh, all were about to start to kolkata they all get in the car irfan sits in the front and sarvan sits beside and peeku behind uh, just with the exchange of looks they talk uh, I want to know how did you come up with and later they both switch their seats. I want to know about how does you come up with that sort of subtlety in writing and how much of that was on the paper. See, um, um, if you understand the dynamics between the people who have hired the car, which is the Banerjee's in that sense, and it has been hired from. an external service provider which is ranal's company right uh, so there is a there is a gap between the two it's a transactional relationship that i will pay you money you will send your driver and uh, we will sit the way uh, you know how people usually sit behind nobody prefers to sit next to the driver usually uh, in in lot of cases but uh, and and given the family that they are you know there's a lot of uh, uh they strained there and uh when rana comes even though he is he is the owner of that taxi company but still the relationship is very impersonal it's very transactional there and and it's a journey that they're going to make till uh, kolkata so right in the beginning piko the kind of person she is she doesn't want that kind of familiarity in fact if at all she'd rather not have him there at all she would have been perhaps more comfortable if the driver was there because this guy is there who who she thinks is responsible for the delay so there's already a negative attached to rana and and that that transactional quality of their relationship forces her to makes her sit on the back seat and 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 that moment where rana looks into the mirror and is not starting the car he could still gets that okay fine i get it that you are not the driver let me go and sit but don't think that there is anything more to it so there's a lot of you know conversation that has been said in that in that particular glint in that little look and uh, is it there on paper yes it is there on paper but uh, more than that i think the way it was enacted even even how budhan sits first on the floor he doesn't sit on the seat because he's so used to not sharing the same level see again it's a discrimination it's a gap between the sahab and the you know the person who's uh, uh, helping you run the house in lot of families that line is very clear and they don't want it to be crossed and and, and it's, it's not 
said it's a very unsaid line and buddhan also follows that till he stood up over there and and hesitantly in one corner of that seat he said so these are um, this is what our conditioning has done to us and uh, while writing if we can be mindful of that conditioning uh, it just makes it more real i mean this is not just this family this is how all of us have grown up ki driver ke bagal mein nahi baithna hai ya tum yahan baithoge wo niche baithega that 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 has how, that is how we are all conditioned in the society but that's exactly what we need to be mindful and therefore break that and and piku is able to do that I, I'm a very big fan of your work, firstly. So my question here is: uh, See, uh, in Gulabu Sitabo, the battle of ownership could have been a uh, very much possible if the uh, prominence was given to Guddu and Mirza instead of Aishman's character and Mirza. So I just wanted to know uh, what was the actual intention of adding Aishman to picture? Because I believe. that's because uh, when the climax scene approaches it's sort of shedding a commentary against patriarchy where both ayushman and mirza both are literally you know they're not uh, left with much this is uh, uh, it's also a commentary against greed but i do feel there is a subtle you know feminist undertone when the prominence is between uh, you know mirza and ayushman i just wanted to know how different it would have been if it is Guddu versus uh, Mirza throughout the duration of the film. Sure, it would have been different from this because then that's a different kind of a, a, a you know relationship we are talking about. But given this Rastogi family, if you see the dynamics of this Rastogi family, um, Banke is the breadwinner, uh, while. the sisters go to have gone to school and they are more educated but when it comes to money the um, the wallet is still with the brother so just because of that actually because of that financial uh, superiority supremacy uh, he is the one who is who is calling the shots he is the one who will go out and also we are talking about the menu you know the place where it's set in 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 lucknow in 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 old part of the city where the lines are have still not blurred between um, you know a man and a woman or your role in the society versus my role in the society but that's exactly what she still wants to break if she was already doing that then that means guddo would have crossed that barrier but she still hasn't and that's why she is all the time so Uh, agitated she says that i want to work she goes to uh, um uh, she she wants the permission of her brother that i look i'm done with my studies i want to work i don't want to get married i want to have a life of my own uh, she goes to uh, uh, gyani shukla and she's uh, willing to kiss him also that is what is needed to get her a job she just wants to be independent she's not yet there and and that is because uh, the the like i said the financial supremacy or or the earning member of the house is still the brother and therefore she has to take that so within her um, bracketed life within her uh, space whatever jitna bhi wo haath pair maar sakte hai wo maar rahi hai wo kar rahi hai kabhi chup ke kar rahi hai kabhi jhoot bol ke kar rahi hai kaise bhi kar rahi hai but she wants to cross over she wants to go on the other side and we are showing her journey of course she could have been the one doing that but she is not hello hi uh so ma'am you spoke beautifully about your process of building characters right and uh, i feel like by the end of your process you said that there are people who can stand in front of you that you, you can have uh, conversations with and it's uh, you write i mean they speak in t- in your script right they speak through you so does that ever become a barrier when you want to see a lot more but then the script doesn't require it and you want it to be crisp but they have so much going on and there's so many things you want to say yeah it happens and that's where shujit comes he just cuts it off so see kya itna kyu bol rahe hain log chota karo chota karo so there's that part also to writing that you write a lot but then there is a voice of um sensibility there there's a sensible voice out there which is lot more 
um, what should I say, more practical and more pragmatic and more matter of fact. When he is reading it, he's he's not being as uh, um, as involved for the first time. I mean, first reading is obviously extremely involved, but then uh, uh, the 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 technical man in him, in any director or any editor or whatever, will take over and uh, starts bringing in his or her point of view into your script, which is what actually starts making the script better, nurturing it, not over saying it, not under saying it, saying it only jitna and, and when two people are collaborating, it's always good. It's not always uh, me who decides how much they should say or speak. Um, another voice brings in a newer perspective and, and therefore it's important to collaborate with people who can bring that and, and nurture it and make it to take it to another level. So sometimes it is just by editing things become more relevant and more, um, you know, focused. Louis, I just wanted to understand, uh, have you ever faced an issue uh, in any of your stories so far that you've written uh, where you go back and forth while you're trying to develop the nuances of the character? Has that happened or you go along as the story progresses? Um, I have actually, um, in the case of uh, Dan, it has been um, slightly, um, not difficult I'll say, but uh, I had to always go back and read what has been written because he comes, he, he's not willing to open his mind. He is a character who's, who's not living life at a deeper level. So uh, how much to what is his shallow point you know which is which is uh, uh, good enough for this character for for the writing for this film you know because uh, there, there is a certain shallowness to uh, or uncertainty to dan that he's grappling with he's not aware of it and and i don't want audience also to judge him because of that he just is that character so i had to keep going back that at any point am i ridiculing him and and uh, um, because not everybody uh, leads leads life with with that kind of depth, and it's absolutely fine because it's only when that point comes in your life that you transform or you start taking risks and you or you start experiencing life more more uh, personally. But uh, uh, we sometimes very quickly judge as as people. We quickly judge them. So I was just going back to whatever I was writing about Dan that by any chance, uh, am I judging him just because I live life deeply? Can, am I ridiculing him? Am I making him seem like a lesser person? Is my arrogance by any chance coming there? You know, so that was one character I had to actually um, go back, um, Mudasa go back and, and be very mindful of um, what I'm doing with him. Hi, Juhi, uh, and thank you so much for writing Piku at the outset because I am a primary caregiver to uh, mm -hmm. somebody who's going through Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, uh, so mm -hmm. my, my in-laws. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and Piku gives me a lot of strength because there are times I lose my top, but right. like you said, that, you know, as long as your intent is fine, right. it's, it's okay, you know, otherwise yeah. you, it, it is constant yeah. self-flagellation. And um, yeah, like I completely agree with Smriti that, you know, you, you actually awaken something in the viewer itself. So thank you for your work. Uh, what I want to, what I really want to know from you as a novelist um, uh, is that, you know, when, when things did not work out in the sense that, uh, you know, a shoe buy did not go on floor or I don't know whether it went on floor or whether it didn't, you know, or, or whether it was shot and I don't know what happened in that mm -hmm. space or when the Kishore Kumar biopic did not happen, what was there self-doubt? As uh, a writer? Uh, in the case of Shobite, actually it was short. It's like almost ready and it hasn't seen light of the day um, for different reasons. But uh, the process was completed and the reason it's not yet released is completely different. It's got nothing to do with the creative process itself. So yeah, there is no self-doubt there. And, and to be very honest, I didn't even have that kind of uh, relationship with uh, writing 
with the process of writing or with cinema as such in the case of Shubhai because that was my first uh, uh, project and it was uh, really somebody else's trust in me that I was, you know, working with. It wasn't my um, my own journey into the world. Somebody said, okay, you know what, you should write this. And I said, okay, let me write this. I had still not deeply lived the experience of Shubhait. Uh, but yeah, when I look back at it, and so yeah, the, 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 the um, what Shajit goes through every time you talk about Shubhait to him is a different emotion. It's way more deeper. Uh, you do feel as a creative person extremely hurt and dejected, but it's not the self-doubt that I'm sure you also go through. It's just that something as a creator, as a creative person, as an artist, you have expressed there. It's there. It's like you have all the thoughts, but there's a tape on your mouth and you can't just voice it. So it's a very stifling feeling for him, I'm sure. Uh, uh, in case of... Uh, Kishore Kumar, again, the project only changed its whole path. So I don't know. Uh, there were at some point in time, a lot of people writing, the nobody writing. So it, we don't know what is the fate of uh, their, Mr. Kishore Kumar's biopic. But uh, for me, uh, again, like I said, that my actual relationship started with Vicky Donner. Uh, again, bio, uh, Kishore Kumar's biopic was also like, you know, brushing up, trying to write a screenplay. And uh, it did turn out decently, but uh, it didn't happen for various other reasons, not because the screenplay didn't cut through. Hi, ma'am. Uh, my question to you is basically, uh, since coming from advertising and being a copywriter, we are always being trained to write as in 30 seconds and 60 seconds to crack that idea in that time duration. So uh, the thing is, obviously that is a positive when writing a screenplay, but has that ever been an obstacle for you? If yes, can you please elaborate? Obstacle while writing an ad or obstacle while writing? While writing the screenplay. Uh, actually, no. On the contrary, that has been, um, that's been one of the strengths that I would say my uh, advertising career has, has given me, uh, which is being very mindful, like I said earlier in the session, of every word that is out there. Every moment in a 30 second ad is precious. It has to be there only if it is making sense. It has to be there only if it is, uh, uh, it is uh, needed. Now, when you come from that kind of training, you start seeing every scene of your film like a mini ad, like a 30 second ad or like a one minute ad. Uh, if it's not saying something substantial, if it's not invoking a certain kind of uh, either emotion or a thought or whatever feeling, it, it doesn't make sense. Why are we taking time? Why are we occupying space? Can this be said in a different way to just a visual? Will it still complete? Do I really need to write actually? You know, a lot of times we get into the habit of writing and explaining everything. And sometimes it's just a moment, just a visual, which says it all, right? So uh, that questioning has come thanks to advertising that every written word uh, must contribute or every visual must speak the story. Otherwise, there's no point. It's a waste of everybody's time. Hello, ma'am. Hope you are doing well. Good yes. evening. Good evening. Uh, my question is to you that uh, after writing the screenplay, when you jump for the dialogue process, so uh, how do you balance the visual, like mise scene, and the dialogue part? And what is the key for a great dialogue writing? Absolutely. Uh, never write it separately. Actually, I never write dialogues after I write the screenplay. I'm writing my dialogues along with the screenplay because, uh, Sadan, what happens is that uh, you cannot. Um, um, you know, what, what the character is speaking, saying of the conversation that is happening in that moment, in the heat of that moment, leads to another scene, leads to another scene, leads to another uh, energy in the room, leads to another incidence in someone else's life. What we speak causes, it's a cause and effect thing. I may be thinking something, but what I speak makes you react in a certain way. So that speak for me is extremely important while writing the screenplay. 
because it takes me to another scene and to another scene and to another scene and it, and that way the the um, there is a consistency uh, always maintained that i know ki piche he has already spoken this he has already behaved like this so he cannot act in this manner i already have an evidence that this person in a situation like this has has already spoken his mind so when he has already made it clear to my protagonist or if my protagonist has already made it clear then why is he again doing this so the scene itself doesn't make sense so the screenplay there sometimes uh, might feel repetitive or useless or inconsequential because in the past i have already made my character say so it's extremely important to write according to me dialogues along with the screenplay because that's actually what is taking you to the other scene in in more focused way of course you may know that is seen to by the yoga for yoga for aisa ho raha hai fir aisa ho raha hai but the moment voice comes now voice of the character comes um, the energy only changes so hello ma'am uh, hi so my question to you is how do you construct your story how do you structure your story in a screenplay and uh, suppose you are writing a scene and how and when do you know that this is a intercut scene you have to uh you have to play the other sto- uh, parallel story at the same time in that scene mm. and uh, also when do you know that this much of information needs to be planned at this scene mm. so that mm. it is going to be uh, pay is going to be later paying paying off mm. in the later scene somewhere so how mm. do you decide all of this in while writing a script that's my question yeah so um you know basic understand basic storytelling basic awareness that my film is about these people this character this is how their journey will be this is here from point a to point b i want them to get uh sometimes um, you may want to reveal everything right in the beginning and let the whole writing be about that crisis in their life sometimes it is uh, let me set it up uh you see okay this is happening here this is happening here this is happening here and you still don't know what really is the crisis like for example in the case of uh, october uh or even in the case of piku for that matter october let's talk till the time that fall doesn't happen till the time surely doesn't fall after 20 minutes of the film uh you still see a hotel world you still don't know where the film is going what is going to happen okay i've seen i've seen but that is such an important part of the film that set up which we call set up is so important because you're just getting more and more familiar with the characters and at some point in time you realize that uh and in that familiarity the crisis starts coming out in 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 that or, or the, whatever is lacking or whatever they are seeking you know that in first 20 minutes of the film that dan does not have any depth at all we've seen we've got to know um that that there is absolutely no hope for this character we know that there is absolutely no relationship that he shares with shuli uh, uh there's absolutely no victorious uh, thing he's going to ever do in his life we know that he is also uh, um he he's just pulling along and hoping that something in his future should work out he's a lost soul so you've established 20 minutes in setting that up and then you uh give the shock of the fall and that shock is not just to uh dan it's also to the audience to me to everyone that oh shit everything was going all right all right all right and now suddenly this fall now what will happen they didn't even talk they didn't kiss they didn't have a have an affair they didn't have a relationship and it seems like that he and she were supposed to be together because that is how the setup is that you know she is little pissed off with him when he throws the flowers and he is irritated with her when the tire gets punctured so you did not give them that time for the relationship to develop you just you know uh, made her fall down but that's where the film actually begins the the journey but uh but for the film to actually begin there or the character transformation to begin begin from there that prior 20 minutes of the film are important uh how do i decide that this much is enough i think while writing you only start feeling that fatigue that i think i've said it enough 
i think i know it now i think whatever needed to be told or understood or not written is already done now if i do anything more i will be doing a for apple i'll be telling everyone everything which i don't want to do at this point in time in the film so uh, that's that comes through your instinct you know that that you have to constantly uh, uh, be aware of uh, it's not just uh, that you keep typing things you you see you type you back off you think you take two day break three day break you come back to it is there anything else that i want to say at this point in time so it's a process it's a it's a relationship that you are sharing uh with that world that you're so trying to create and and you'll get you'll get the response from there only if you're involved if you're invested in your writing i feel harshal that uh, if you're so invested your responses your communication uh, will believe me it'll be very very strong with that it will automatically start giving you hints ki you know what delete 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 other like yeah yeah write more not yet convincing not yet. It, it it begins to happen and and for that yes i do cut myself out from a lot of other things and then it's just writing and me at what point in time i do realize that i need to cut away to something else and cut back and all that see when you're following one person's track Uh, you following but you know that in life parallel things are happening parallel tracks are happening when i'm talking to smriti or to you over here there is another life going on in my house which if this was a film i would have cut to the life outside this room then what is going on there you know it, it is not purely dimensional it's not single track life is not single track so your film cannot be single track it will have uh, <coughs> sorry multiple cameras trying to show why this is happening this is happening elsewhere and all that would of course be related to this ex person's life so that again that also uh, comes from a realization that we are not living a life in isolation there is a world around us that is moving on and how much of that world is important for the viewer to see that at this point in time i must cut away to show that world and bring him back uh, hi ma'am uh, thank you for so many experiences uh, so my question is that uh, when you are writing a film or you have an idea so first you ideate the whole basic concept of the film or how it will go roughly yeah. or uh, do your characters uh, drive your story no initially of course it is what is the purpose of writing what is this idea about what am i trying to say through this idea um the the discussion on the idea itself what how is it connected or important for anyone to know a how is this idea big enough for me to invest myself what is the point it's trying to make and why should anybody what is the purpose see any form of art you will question what is its purpose how is it satisfying what question is it satisfying at what point the need arises for me for someone to go and see this film and what part of you will will come back with answers so uh, first is that part you know what is there in it for me to explore and once you find that once you find that truth uh then you start okay where will it be placed who are these people this seems to be the world of these characters uh, so how will i arrive at you know uh, that uh, conflict or whatever you call it but first is of course the um, the purpose the intent of the idea does it even have hands and legs to be a two hour film to be a hour and a half film or is it all right to just write a small status <laughs> facebook status or whatever and let it be there uh, um yeah so first is always an in depth understanding of the idea and then characters but then characters take it all on their shoulder they become your allies they become your best friends to carry it for you Hi Jogi uh, first of 
because I want to congratulate you because I watched your films I don't know a dozen times. Okay, <laughs> so uh, and with my family who really enjoyed it. And I had two questions, but uh, you know I know there's a shortage of time. I had one was that how do you know your characters become topic of discussion? Because your characters are be unique. And I do understand that you come from an advertising background, so therefore I I am assuming that you give a lot of thought to your characters, and once you know your characters' backstory, you're able to take the story forward. Number two, I wanted to ask you was that when you write your characters, is it the characters' uh, quirkiness or the characters' ristics uh, of you know the traits? Does that propel you, or what they're going to do through the story propels you to write the story? See the, the first part. How do characters become a point of discussion? I don't know. See, maybe uh, they feel like a part of you and me, our lives. They they come from um, a world we sort of are aware of, or have lived, or experienced, or heard of. Sometimes it may be our own guilt that. we see through them sometimes it's our own triumph that we are seeing in them something about them maybe uh, feels relatable uh, and also what happens when i'm writing i i tend to uh, you know like how onion is you just keep feeling just keep feeling keep feeling one layer after the other after the other after that nothing comes out you uh, have to come to that understanding of uh, i i uh, do that that if i take away all this person this pretend this person's all the pretense if i take all the show off if i take away all his worries if i take away everything so you know that what can i take away from him what can i take away from him that is th- that sometimes i do that exercise uh, to get to the core of the person that what is left of him or her what is his truth that comes out when you take away all the crutches that or all the worldly uh, uh, um, things that that he's riding or piggy backing on to get to the truth of the person and when you get to the truth of the person that usually relates or resonates with us and and i just try to find that about my characters and maybe that's why people are able to relate and they do find it uh, similar or a mirror maybe sometimes sometimes it's uncomfortable to watch a person because he's so close to you in that sense um uh do i um use the quirks of the character to write the story or do i or is it the story that propels i think it happens simultaneously uh it's it's never the quirk of the character that will take the story forward it's always the truth of the character the behavior see you know when we are at home we are not we we don't live our relationships in a scientific manner in a logical manner in a corrective manner or in a a, a um calculated manner or politically correct manner all of that we just live we just say things we just behave and yes a lot of times we say all the wrong things and a lot of time we regret and a lot of time it's just a foul a uh, a uh, you know uh, expression that comes out sometimes it's the most hurtful truth that comes out but yeah but that's how we live that's how we are as human beings and one thing leads to another to another and and um that is what i prefer my characters do that li- live or say things in that kind of way the way you and i live our lives because that often leads to uh, uh, another scene which is equally relevant i mean of course we've already placed them in a certain environment we've already placed them in a certain situation we've already given them a certain crisis i use characters speak to make that crisis even more relevant even more uh, uh, compelling even more relatable uh, and and yeah story sometimes does take a different shape because of that but then so be it Uh, what is most important is the experience or the sum total of that should be uh, uh, should resonate should seem convincing sometimes it's the story uh, first but story um, that i have to write only towards this can be sometimes limiting so i i 
do want my characters to uh, behave in just the way you and I would behave in very uncalculated and very in most spontaneous manners. Uh, first of all, Juhi, thank you for giving us so much of time and thank mm -hmm. you for working on this session as hard as you did. Um, <laughs> So, so, so grateful for mm -hmm. the time that you've spent on this and uh, I hope everybody had a great time. Um, our next session, I'm going to be in conversation with Tapsi Pannu and we're going to talk about a life beyond cinema, which doesn't mean that we'll talk about Vipassana. Um, basically, Tapsi is going to talk about how you don't, how you need to have... Uh, you know, alternatives to go to. And that is one of the ways or one of the methods in which uh, you can avoid taking desperate choices. So join us and also please feel free to write to us uh, about things that you would like to know about cinema sessions, suggestions that you have and any kind of feedback that's going to help us make this better. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Juhi. Thank you, Thanks. everybody. Thanks, Vipi. Thank you. Thank you.